All right, so I want to do a, a video over wrist conditions and how they affect the club face. But not only that, what type of release pattern needs to match up with those? Um, so we're going to take a deeper look at Victor Hovland and Webb Simpson and how they um, can manipulate their wrist and club face, but what type of release patterns match up with that. All right, so we're taking a look at the release patterns and how they match the club face and wrist conditions here. So I've got Webb Simpson on the left, Victor Hovland on the right. Um, similar grips, I'd say Webb Simpson's probably got a little stronger left hand, but both have a uh, fairly neutral to weak right hand. So we're going to see how they work the club face into the back swing. So we'll stop at shaft parallel to the ground. All right, and this is where it gets dramatically different. So I'm going to zoom in here. So on Webb Simpson's club face, we're going to see a lot more extension in that lead wrist, which is going to cause that club face to start to open up. Where Hovland, we can see that he creates a little bit more flexion in that lead wrist. So his club face, relatively closed, you know, we look at the, the seam line of the shirt or the spine there. So I would say these are two ends of the spectrum. Hovland's much more closed. Uh, Webb Simpson's much more open. And we'll work up to the top of the backswing. And we'll see how those wrist conditions affect that club face. So you can't see Hovland's at the top, but his club face is very much closed. Now here we're looking at the leading edge to the lead forearm. So two very extremely different swings. Now what's unique about this is Hovland actually hits a cut. Webb Simpson hits a draw. Um, hits a draw from an open club face. Victor hits a cut from a closed one. And we'll see how they do that looking at the release pattern. So we see very different wrist conditions there at the top. One is very cupped, Webb Simpson. One is very bowed, Victor Hovland. So we're going to bring that down and see where that club face is here. It's a very different wrist conditions club face. So again, drawing those lines, you can see toe up versus spine. Still maintains the extension in that lead wrist, that flap of the glove is facing up. You don't see too many of these on tour. We do see a lot more of these on the right with Hoblin. Becoming way more common with your Colin Morkawa, Jordan Speed, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka. You know, main getting that flexion early in that lead wrist and maintaining it. So club face uh, relatively close there. Definitely compared to Webb Simpson. So, release patterns, they have to match up. So what we're going to see Webb Simpson do is with him maintaining that much extension in the lead wrist, he is going to have to have a lot of forearm roll here. And that's one reason he has that um, unique looking finish, is that club face is very open, not facing the golf ball yet. So he's going to have to slam it shut. So we can see how much the club face has closed to that point. Now we look at Hovland. His club face is closed. He doesn't want to hit a left. He wants to hit a cut. So he's going to have less forearm rotation. And that club face is way more open relative to Webb Simpson's. So we get here to the exit. You can see that club face severely different. Now, which one's right or wrong? Neither are right or wrong. They're both unique to that individual golfer. So you can see that glove of his is facing backwards. So he has what we'd call the Spider-Man release, where he his lead wrist is going to go into a lot of extension into the finish, where his is going to roll um, a lot harder trying to square that face. So completely different release patterns matching up completely different club faces. Um, both of them make a lot of money and won a lot of golf tournaments. All right, so we took a look at those two. Um, you know, going over now how they manipulate the club and the, and the wrist conditions, but I want to go over some pitfalls um, and some advantages of those types of releases. So, you know, starting with Hovland, 
we see that early bow in the wrist. And when he comes down, that club face is matching the ground or it's, it's pointing at the ball a little bit more, toe down just a hair more. So again, what we see from there is more of that wrist going back into extension. And so when that happens, that club face reopens and that's gonna help that club face stabilize down through impact. But if we take a look at what that club face does, it's not twisting around the shaft as much. So that club face is closed, and then we work it back through there, reopens. So there's very little closure of the club face. So some benefits of that, if you watch Hovland, he swings pretty hard with that driver. He's a phenomenal driver of the golf ball. Because that club is not twisting around the shaft, it, the face is gonna be more stable through the hitting area. So he's able to just take a rip at it and great ball striker. Some downfalls to that are gonna be Victor's short game. He struggles around the greens and really struggles in the bunker. So when we watch his takeaway, he goes into that flexed wrist. He's going to turn the club face down so that that leading edge is exposed to the ground. And he's also taking quite a bit of bounce off by doing that. So he's going to struggle when he comes back through on these bunker shots with that leading edge down more. He's going to have to manipulate, and it's going to be harder to time that. So if we take Webb Simpson, on the other hand, and now... We have a takeaway that has a lot of extension in that lead wrist. So he maintains or if anything adds to it and gets up to the top. And when he comes down, he maintains that. You don't see that too much. There's not a whole lot of golfers that do that on TV. So from here, this club face is relatively open. So he's going to have to have a completely different release pattern. So we're going to see him have a lot more twist in that grip. So his club face is going to be twisting around the shaft more. So he's going to have to, be, have to be very careful with ball position, and it's going to be harder to time that. So he's going to have to practice and groove that a lot. And if you think of Victor Hovland, you know, he's a top 10 machine, and you got Webb Simpson who kind of rides the waves. He's playing really good, and then he kind of falls off. And we don't hear his name for a while. So I believe that has to do with that club face closing at such a rapid rate that it's going to be harder to time that. You can time it for a little while, but then you're going to have these kind of peaks and valleys. So he's going to have a lot more twist in that shaft to be able to square that club face. Now, some advantages of that are short game. So when we see that takeaway and we add that extension in that lead wrist, he's now open the face. So he is maintaining or adding loft, but he's also maintaining or adding bounce. So when he comes down, his club face is still maintained bounce and loft. Now he wouldn't have as much forearm rotation through that he would just maintain some of that extension in that lead wrist. So think of his bunker game and short game, phenomenal short game. Um, he can hit a lot of high, soft shots, great bunker player. They can put a ton of speed through the bottom. Um, so there are some advantages to short game that way. So just wanted to go over those two, uh, again, extreme um, conditions with that amount of flexion or extension, open face and closed face, and how those release patterns match up but also some advantages to those and then some disadvantages to those. So neither one's right or wrong. Both of those guys have made a lot of money, won a lot of golf tournaments. So if just that information can help you in any way, um, hope it does and hopes you get a greater insight on how that moves down there through impact. Thank you.